to all the ones who were here before to Beyond Evil, True Crime. I am your host, Kimberly, and we are going to talk about the case of Linda Cardi. Linda Cardi is on death row, so let's get into it. <laughs> oh, and just to let you guys all know, all of my new followers, first off, thank you very, 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 very much. And um, please remember to hit the little bell because I don't have a schedule. I do have a day job. Um, and so it, it, sometimes it gets a little bit rough with the researching. I'm a one-woman show. And um, I, I never know when I'm going to put out a video. So it'll give you a little reminder that I've dropped a video and you'll know to come on over here and watch it. So please do that. And I am a big believer in correction and all of that. So if you hear something that I say that's not right, please let me know in the comments. Or you can head over to my website in the um, or my email address at beyondevilemail.com and um, I will fix whatever was wrong or, you know, research it some more or do whatever. So please, please, please. Don't ever hesitate to think that, you know, I think I am 100% right because I can only do so much research. And though I use the Freedom Act to get um, court records sent to me and all of that, I still use our infamous Google to look up some other stuff. And I, you know, watch um, documentaries and all of that. But I do do most of my cases will all be with one where I have some type of court record because I I'm one of those people that say don't believe everything you see on the internet. And so I can't very well say that if I'm believing everything I hear and see on the internet, right? So I go by the court records about how this, what took place and what happened. So most of the time you're hearing everything that I have, it's from a court document that's probably this big. And I've read through all of it just to see what, what's what. And, um, that's, that's just the deal. So this is also, a little bit different in the sense of I'm doing a what the fuck version of a podcast, but I also have some other content that'll be on here because not all of the episodes that I do will be a, there'll be a podcast that goes with it. This particular case does have a podcast that's out so you can go catch it on any of your podcatchers and um, it's a politically correct fact-based only podcast. So you won't get all the, my quirkiness and my attitude and opinions, but You'll hear the case. So let's move on. Cardi, Linda Cardi. She is, they call her the grandmother on death row. I just call her the inmate on death row. Um, she took the life of a 25-year-old woman who had a three-day-old baby. And it was purely selfish she took the baby. She killed this woman because she wanted her baby because she couldn't have a baby. You'll have a whole bunch of people say, oh, she could have had a baby. She's had one before. And obviously she couldn't because you know what? She had a common law husband and he wanted a baby. And three years later, she still ain't got no kids. So he leaves her and all of a sudden she telling everybody she pregnant and having a baby. I'm sorry, but we just not going, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. That's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing. So Cardi would want everyone to believe that she was a law abiding, just a little saint. You were not. No, ma'am. You were not because she was an informant. Now, those of you that don't know, you can't be an informant unless you are living the life. They're not going to come ask me to inform for the cartel. I don't know nothing about. It's not going to happen. So she will be asked to be an informant because she went to rent a car, kept the car, never paid for the car. And when she rented the car, she told him she was an FBI agent. Now, first off, impersonating a federal agent will get you some serious time. In her case, it would have got her deported because she was originally from St. Kicks. She moved here in 1982. St. Kicks didn't receive their independence until 83. So she has dual citizenship, but they would have sent her ass back. And they, they went up to her and the, the state was like, okay, you know what? You, you be an informant for us. 
we will drop the threat theft charge, but you're going to get 10 years probation for impersonating a federal agent. And she took it. She helped him with two arrests. But then she thought, you know, she was so in like Flynn that she could do whatever she wanted to do. So they had a drug house under surveillance for major drug um, activity. Well, she comes up to this house, goes in the house, comes out with a large package. And so a couple of the agents was like, okay, they follow her. Now, mind you, I don't know if it was agents that she worked for or if they knew her or they, you know, whatever, but whatever the case may be, she took them on a high speed chase. Then she attempted to run over another officer. By the time they got her subdued and searched her car, they recovered um, $3,900 in cash, 50 pounds of marijuana and two guns. Needless to say, she was no longer an informant. And, but if you ask her, because a British reporter asked her in a documentary, and this Heffa said, friends of hers from the Houston Police Department came to her and asked her to be an informant because she was a hairstylist and she would hear all kind of stuff. Now I get my hair done and I have seen several hairstylists. I promise you ain't none of them informing on nobody. <laughs> But that's just me. So she, her little life as an informant was over. So she goes on to, you know, live her best life, I guess. And her husband on May 12th, 2001, her common law husband, he's had enough. Now, a lot of people will focus on the fact that, you know, he left because of the baby. Well, he probably left because she couldn't have a baby and a whole bunch of other shit she did. Because I know couples who have stayed together, you know, even though they can't have kids because they can adopt, they can do whatever, because they everything else about the relationship is beautiful and wonderful. I'm assuming in this case, he like, bitch, I'm only here if I had a baby. I can't even have a baby with you and... You want me to stay for the rest of this bullshit you're pulling? Hell no. So that did, didn't work out. So, you know, he left. Cardi would start losing her shit. Like she was in a tizzy. Oh my God. Oh my God. What am I going to do? I need to get a baby. I need to get a baby. Instantly, she start going. She, she has a neighbor. Her name is Joanne Rodriguez. Joanne Rodriguez is big pregnant. Like gonna drop any day now big pregnant i guess a little bite light bulb came up over um cardi's head because she went to start recruiting people to do a robbery because she claimed the rodriguez house was a drug house and do y'all want to do a robbery now mind you this is her thing because the crew she recruited they were going to do two robberies that day so this wasn't like knew and then they believed her because you know i guess she was in that she was in the game so they're like okay she knows so they believed her so she's trying to recruit people to do this robbery most people are like nah mm -mm, I'm get out of here with that bullshit well a guy named chris robinson he's like let me let me hear you out tell, tell me tell me tell me about this so she tells him that there's 900 pounds of marijuana now, I'm going to stop there for a hot second. By no means do I have the street smarts or the knowledge of what 900 pounds of marijuana looks like. But I've seen my 600-pound life, that TV show. So I know how big one of them people are. Now, I, this is not... I'm not fat shaming nobody because your girl's a little, little fluffy herself. But... They, they, those, these are some big people and they're like 700 pounds 900 pounds that's a lot where are they putting all that and how are they getting it in the house but okay so he's like I'm thinking had she said they had 200 pounds that's like you know 200 pounds is not that that much I mean it's much it's a lot but you know I'm sure they would have did the robbery for 200 pounds 200 300 pounds but 900 Come on now. Yeah, and nobody thought that through. No, nobody was like, how'd they get 900 pounds in that house? 
Nobody, nobody thought that through. So that guys was the guy. He was like, okay, I'm in. So this is all taking place on the 12th. The day her dude left, she has accomplished this in one day. So the 13th is here, Chris and two other dudes, they getting ready to go rob this house. Well, Joanna and her husband see Cardi with the three guys. So Cardi postpones it. She's like, ah, 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 ah. I got seen with y'all. I can't be seen with y'all. So we, we need to, we need to do it another day. So the other two dudes was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm out. Robinson was still in on it. They go over to this little meeting house that they have. It's like a house that I don't know. It's where all the activities happen at. So they're at this house. Two people come last name, Williams and Anderson. They ask him, y'all want to do this job with us? One of them says, as long as I can have a gun, They're like bet we got you. <laughs> so these three gentlemen, Robinson, Anderson, and Williams decide we're going to do this robbery. One of them, I believe it was Williams because Anderson, Anderson, I believe is only like 21. So he probably, I don't know if he was thinking like the other one. Um, but because, um, Williams, I mean, Robinson, I believe is 32. Williams is 28. And then, um, Anderson is 21, I believe. If memory serves me correct. And um, so asked her, what do you, what do we get out of this? She tells him, you can have everything in the house, everything you find. Once again, uh, I'm not no, no street thug, no heathen, no, but I'm going to have questions. <laughs> I'm going to have some questions. I'm going to be like, wait a minute. Then what you getting out of it? You know what I mean? So. But you know what? He didn't have to ask that because she then tells him the girl, the, the woman in the house, she's pregnant and she's pregnant by my husband that technically makes that baby mine. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. That's not how any of this works. But okay. So she's like, and they're like, okay. But I think it was greed. Greed was leading them. Like they're like, she got bitch problems. We not let her handle her problems with her nigga and, you know, all of this shit. Do what you do. We going to do this over here. So they, they, they end, they, they, they going to do this. So the 15th rolls around because that was third. That was the, um, the 13th, the 13th, 14th. So the 15th is here and she's moving stuff in and out of a storage unit. She tells the lady at the storage unit that she had the baby already because she was at the storage unit the day before and told the lady she was in labor. And I think that was because she thought she would already have the baby. But that didn't happen. So the storage lady was told on the 15th, she already had the baby. It's at home with my husband. Everything's good. We, we live in our best life. She told another lady that, I'm going to have a baby tomorrow. I'm in, I, I'm, I'm due to have a baby tomorrow. The lady like, when, when did you get pregnant? I know you, <laughs> you ain't pregnant. Cardi's rolling with it. Cardi even called her common law husband to tell him I'm having a baby tomorrow. What? <laughs> okay. So that's what she, that's what she tells him. They're like, okay. So, the 16th comes, it's, well, it's the, it's the morning. It's like 12, 12 AM. Um, and Williams, Anderson and Robinson, they ride in Anderson's car to the robbery. While they're in there, they say, we not kidnapping nobody. Cardi's stupid, crazy. We ain't, we ain't kidnapping nobody. Why they didn't keep that same energy when they got there? I don't know. Because when they got there, Cardi drove in a different car. She got there. They go in. They kick down the door. One of them stays downstairs. The, um, duct tapes and everything. Because there's a relative uh, cousin that's staying with them. And he's downstairs when they kick through the door. So one of them stays downstairs and handles him. The other two go upstairs. Upstairs they find Joanne Rodriguez, 
her husband, and a three-day-old baby. Yeah. Unbeknownst to everybody, she done had the baby. So right here is where shit could have changed. It should have changed. Where they called Cardi and said, we got the shit. Instead of saying, it's a baby, not a pregnant woman. What do you want me to do? They don't say that. They just say, do you want this? Are you ready for this? Or something like that, right? Because she downstairs. She, did, she didn't go in. She's outside. She didn't go in. They bring down the baby and the woman. They duct tape and they pistol whip and duct tape the husband and leave him upstairs. Cardi takes the baby. They, at gunpoint, um, Williams is walking the, the girl over to the, to the car and goes to put her in Anderson's car. And Robinson is like, oh, whoa, 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 no, no. That's not what you're going to do, bruh. You're going to put her in Cardi's car. That's Cardi's problem. So they put her in Cardi's car. Cardi is like, um, you guys have to bind her or whatever. And I guess they was like, this is your problem. But they went on and did it. And, you know, they both left. But they leave and they meet up at this meet up house I told you about. So they, they meet back there because the dudes is pissed. There was no cash, no money, I mean, no drugs. And there was they got $1,000 that the couple was saving to buy a car. Not a drug house. So they're at this house now yelling at Cardi. The owner of the grandson of the owner of the house, he comes out. Now, mind you, I believe he was part of the first crew that was gonna rob him and then changed his mind. Not for sure, but... The people in the house was a little shady. So they he came down and he's like, y'all need to shut up. It's too loud. You gonna wake my grandmother up. Get the fuck off my land. He saw the girl in the trunk of the car still alive. He's just like, yeah, y'all need to move this shit. Y'all need to get the fuck out of here. So he go back upstairs. The guys get back in the car. They leave. Cardi gets in the car and moves the car, but doesn't move it off completely off of the property. But she doesn't leave. I guess the guys went back to wherever they went and Robinson got his car because then he comes back. When he comes back, he sees Cardi leaning over the trunk of the car. He he you know, gets out and goes over there and she's smothering the girl. He stops her, but by this time she's dead. So now he's like, what the fuck? Like, and then later he would do an interview and say, she had to kill her because... That's the only person she could identify is her. If they let her go, the guys wouldn't be identified because they had on ski masks. But Cardi didn't have on anything. And Cardi was there and Cardi used to live in the building with him. So in his mind, he's like, she she was going to kill her anyway. You know what I mean? And why y'all didn't think that through, I don't know. But yeah. So, but and I don't know what they have, what she has on them because she tells him, drive me to my motel. And he does it. And I'm like, bitch, you're lucky I ain't laid your ass out. I ain't driving your ass nowhere. That's what been, that would have been me. But So he drives her to the hotel. He's still going on, but I do know that they have another robbery that they're supposed to do that same day. So she's, um, he's like mad because it's not a drug house. And he walks over to the apartment, the apartment, the motel room with her. And she opens up the door and he sees all this baby stuff. And then that's when it dawned on him. This bitch played us. She just wanted the baby. It was no drugs. So now he pissed. But they got this other robbery and he da, he thinks it's, you know, I, I, he going to get some money, I guess. So he ain't all the way mad, but he mad. And um, so he leave. He leaves her there. They He goes to do whatever he's going to go do. And then he comes back to, um, they go back to this little meeting house that I told you that they keep, um, they keep meeting at <laughs> and um cardi has another car so cardi left her car with joanna in the car on the property at the house she then comes back in her a car that her daughter rented and she comes back and um it's they're gonna they're meeting up to go do um the the second robbery now mind you i don't know how they're doing the second robbery because there is a baby 
what 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 are we doing with the baby? I'm not understanding. Like the baby going with you to the to the robbery? What what are we doing with this baby? So um they they get, you know, all ready to go do the second robbery. Now the second robbery does not one of them um Anderson is not a part of the second robbery. And um and wait, Anderson or Williams? Is it Anderson or Williams? It's not a part of the second robbery. Let me see. Um together barbecue. Uh okay. So um Anderson is not a part of the second robbery. He's like, I mean, um Williams is not a part of the second robbery. He's like, mm -mm, nah. So Anderson and Robinson were gonna be a part of this second robbery. Well, the second robbery didn't happen because um Cardi got called by her friends over at the Houston Police Department. Yeah. Now, this is my thing. Police ain't gonna call me when a crime happened in my neighborhood. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, they're not gonna call me. I'm not on their radar. Why they calling you and you so law-abiding? I don't know, but that's her thing. Well, they called her because the hood done spoke. This half have been walking around telling everybody she having a baby and everybody knows she ain't pregnant. And now a baby is missing and the mama. Cop, it didn't take long before the cops got four out of two and two. So they was like, yeah, well, let's talk to you. Come on down here. So she go down there. They leave the baby with Williams and Robinson. They go to take the baby to a church. They can't find no church open. So they put the baby in her car in the Pontiac and um, push it down the street a little bit. Turn it on for the air to be going and the baby is in it. I don't know if they went and called the cops so that somebody would drive by and see it or, you know, come check it out. I don't know. But I do know Cardi ass over there singing like a bird. Well, not all the way like a bird because she she tried to play coy. So what she did was she's like, of course, going on and on. I, I, I am not pregnant. I mean, I can have a baby if I want to have a baby and I don't have anybody's baby. I don't have to steal nobody's baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. So. Then I don't know how her car got in it, like what brought her car into the conversation, but whatever the case may be, she started saying, I loaned my car to a guy. He asked me to borrow it. I let him borrow it. He needed it for five or 10 minutes. Where are you going in five, 10 minutes? He might as well have walked, but whatever. So, but you don't know who you rent a car to? Where'd they do that at? So she, then they bring her a photo array of some people. Well, Robinson is in there. Williams is in there. I don't know if Anderson is in there, but, um, she picks out Robinson. She says, um, they call him Chris. Bitch, you know they call him Chris. <laughs> so then, and the other one, she's like, I don't know his name, but he be in, in, in the neighborhood. They didn't ask you who be in the neighborhood. They asked you who you gave card to. So now you done snitched out two people. Girl. So they have, they decide to go. And they, no, wait. Then she says, I can tell you the last place I saw my car which was this house that I told you they keep meeting at. So they go to this house and they see her car. They check her car. They find the baby. They find um, Joanna in the trunk. Then they arrest or haul in for questioning. Robinson, Williams, and two, um, Zebediah and Armand from, and their last name is Coombs. I don't know if they're brothers or cousins, but call them in. Well, one of them I think was our, um Zebediah, he mentioned Williams being a part of the kidnapping and robbery, but then tried to backpedal. They released the Coombs brothers, or the two Coombs and Williams. Later on, the um, Armand would testify that Williams said he wished he never was there. So I don't know how they got Williams or Anderson for that matter. Um, because they had Robinson. Robinson went on and, and told, yeah, he did it. She told us it was drugs. And he said, just like I said, where we thought we were robbing a drug dealer where police don't get involved. If I rob them, they're going to rob us or they're going to kill us. It's, it's, it's dealt with us. It's not nobody else. So that's what he thought he was doing. And then she, you know, she killed this baby. Um, and she said to him that, if I got to cut the baby out of the bitch, I will. That let them know she was willing to kill from jump. So this would be probably 
part of the reason why she went up for capital murder and they did not. The The three co-conspirators went for, um, they got a plea bargain and I believe they got like 30 years, 25, 30 years apiece. And, um, and she, capital murder, and she was convicted and got death penalty. She tried everything under the sun um, to, to, you know, say something. But her husband even came to the, um, the police station after she was arrested and asked her, well, did you have a baby? And this heifer said, not yet. <laughs> Bitch. So it's like, what? So she, she's, of course, you know, she gets, she's like waiting trial. She then tries to have this lady write a letter. She wrote the letter and wanted her to write it in her handwriting because she told her it can't be in my handwriting. And the letter basically was supposed to be from somebody named Oscar saying that Robinson and Zebediah were um, setting her up and that they borrowed her car and they did all of this, but they want her to take the fall for it type of deal. Really? <laughs> that's, that's what we doing? <laughs> okay. So... She came to the court and she told it. And then, you know, all the people that she told she was having a baby, they testified. But yet she want everybody to believe that she is set up. And that she used the whole, I was a DEA informant and, you know, I was set up. And the whole thing is, is that everybody is saying that her husband did testify. She tried to say that, you know, the reason why you know, she, she wouldn't have been convicted if her husband, did, husband wouldn't have testified and he shouldn't have had to testify because he was her common law husband. And in, um, Texas, they have a law where, you know, the spouse doesn't have to testify against you, but he didn't really say anything other than the fact that she was a liar and that she kept saying she was pregnant and she wasn't that he didn't really, he didn't say anything else. You know what I mean? So it was like that. And that was, she tried to get uh, one of her appeals was based off of that. Well, needless to say, 2018, I believe, was the last one that got denied. So your girl should be getting a death date sometime soon. So, you know, stay tuned to see when she has that date. Other than that, um, that is the story of Linda Cardi. There is a documentary out there you, on YouTube. You can watch it. Um, if you want to hear just the facts where I give you everybody's real name, birth date, and all that good stuff, um, check out the podcast. Other than that, if you heard anything that I didn't release or um, anything that was incorrect, please leave it in the comments. You know, edit, edit, edit it. <laughs> um, please um, also subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe. And um, till next time, thank you guys. And this is.